Well, I've been insulating the ceiling up to this point here. So about halfway down the sliding door. I've added some extra timber around the opening to the max van. So when I come to do the ceiling, when I put the ceiling up, I'll be able to just route that out and it will look tidy. I won't have to join several pieces together. This is just a piece of guide wood and it continues down into the above cab storage. So because I want to continue the roof all the way to the front of the cab storage. That's not fixed yet. I'm not loyal to any particular brand, but this works. So at the moment, this is just, just loose. And what I'll do is I'll just flip it over, stick on my adhesive, and then push it back against the front of the van with the ceiling running all the way to the front of the van. It just means I can make more use of it. I don't have to box it out as a separate cupboard. It can just be an open slot. With the insulation pretty much done from, from this point all the way to the back of the van, it does mean that condensation is becoming problematic at this end. So I, th I think I'm going to have to just stop insulating tonight because I'm just going to seal moisture underneath the insulation. Do you know what, with the present black plastic roof, it's kind of dark in here. That'll hold. <laughs> I'm supremely confident about that. And you're not really gonna be able to see a great deal, but the, uh, the insulation's up here, more rock wall. Um, this is enough vapor barrier to continue down and up above the cab. Yeah, isn't it dark in here? The difference, the difference in having a black ceiling it's like nighttime in here, but it's nighttime. It is nighttime. When I put the the flange on, I've got some weather strip that can go along the the inside surface uh, along there. Just because it's really flimsy, it's a shame. It's a shame, but it's it's easily remedied. You just have to remedy it yourself. Anyone from Max Air watching, sort your flange out. I'm actually running low on rock wall. So I might not have enough to do above the cab there. Mick's already been here and helped me get the first of the ceiling panels up. Uh, he was coming back. I have in the meantime cut the next piece, done a rough cut of where the, where the max fan is going to be. Once it's up there, I'll jigsaw that out. There have been a few problems getting it up and this will be helpful for anyone else who's putting a ceiling up. Be mindful of where the edge of the ply is going to be. Now I'm okay here, that's okay. Here is okay, here is okay. Where the boards are connecting, I should have put in a thicker joist. But where the, the two boards overlap the edge, there's just not enough to bite into. Got a good bite here. The last three screws, there's no wood, there's not enough wood behind it. I can't go any further to the edge of the ply because I'll split it. Fortunately, there's going to be cupboards up there which will pin it much more securely than these tiny screws. So at least I can maybe glue the two boards together using my very strong adhesive. The, the ceiling above the cab is insulated. The reason I've left the gaps at the sides, I will fill those in. Um, I just didn't want any joins in the middle as it is the one join that I do have is gonna be problematic. If it's still a problem, I'll just put a strip across it. Fuck me, it's cold. I've been watching some, uh, some Canadian van lifers and they must be made of, they must be made of granite. But cl clearly I'm not as rugged as I thought I was.
So what I've not shown you before, a trim for the bulkhead. That's not the finished article, because that's ridiculous, having that straight edge. What I did was I used the bulkhead as a way of creating that curve. Not easy to clamp anything to. I clamped a much thinner piece of ply, close to the edge as I could. And then I transferred that line to the thicker ply and then cut it. Once I've got it bolted in there, I'll be able to trace the shape of the plastic trim and the two will sit up to each other. I have started cutting off this plastic here, this plastic lip. I don't want that, it takes up valuable inches. Also, it's fucking ugly, so that's gonna have to go. I am running an extension lead from the house, but this little heater is more than enough to warm this thing up, even with the doors not insulated uh, and the cabs not insulated either. <laughs> it almost looks homely. I'm following the line of this plastic here, now I'm going to have a go at cutting the front of this off. I might have to cut it off in stages, sort of go in at an angle, get underneath, and then once this is off, I do the same in the other direction. changing my mind now is there use of space. I'll keep the tray in there, obviously. Nine o'clock. Oh, toasty warm. Yeah, tidy up and then um, I'll call it a night. I'm going to router out the that square in the ceiling. It's the only thing I'm going to do this morning and possibly the only thing I'm going to do today. Which, uh, I don't want to be completely unproductive on a, on a Sunday. It's a flush fit bit. The bearing is at the end. The cutter is as wide as the bearing. Just at the depth. I don't want to go in too deep for obvious reasons. There is an expensive Max fan behind. It does generate a fair amount of dust. Awesome. It's nice and straight and it's followed the line. It has torn at the vapor barrier a little and the flange is just, just deep enough through my very thick insulation. It's a little bit cool, it's one degree. One. I think I'm gonna have to forego the, the weather strip behind there because it's just gonna make it look too thick and maybe bow it out. There's dust inside the infrared sensor. A little bit of sawdust. So not dust proof. So be careful. <laughs> 